Hi guys. As I think you can see in the background, we are in hell. We have arrived in hell. Here on this just apocalyptic day here in the end times in the former paradise of Mount the Mount Baker volcano which looks like it has exploded here on this just beyond depressing gloomy smoke choked day here in the end times that would be Thursday September 7th 2017 so uh, today is supposed to be the first day of the second half of my uh, my Bigfoot hunt here in, in paradise but instead it's going to be my last day at least here in this chapter as I abandon once again once again in the summer of 2017 my latest plan my latest plan and pack up all of my shit one more time into my gas sucking truck to head this time I guess I'm going from the Mount Baker volcano to the Mount Olympia volcano in search of Bigfoot and hopefully a gasp of fresh air but uh, there's no telling because I understand that I am fucked in every single direction 360 degree fucked. Nowhere to go, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide from the collapse of a planet. And so I cannot think of a better day to bring you this week's depressed collapsitarian whine. This is not a rant. This is a whine. And I don't know where this rambling rant's gonna go here for my last day on the flanks of the smoke obscured Mount Baker volcano. Uh, good God. You know, I, I, I'm sure I've mentioned before Woody Allen's old joke, where did this come from, Annie Hall, talking about the object in life. The object in life is that the, the, there's two groups of people in life. There are the truly horrible and the basically miserable. And if you can just keep yourself in the camp of the basically miserable you're winning and this is exactly where we have reached uh, here in the summer of 17 uh, Woody Allen uh, the doomsday prophet uh, fr from here on out guys the goal uh, at least my goal I guess I can only speak for myself uh, is to stay in the camp of the basically miserable and try to avoid uh, the, the, the camp of the truly horrible as the new normal, the new normal uh, descends over this planet as, as the, the twilight zone existence uh, ramps up. Talk about doomsday prophets. Uh, Rod Serling, a lot more than Woody Allen, being uh, one of the great doomsday prophets, uh, and of course, 
my number one all time, uh, number one Humpty Dumpty Tribe favorite Twilight Zone episode is exactly, exactly the episode we are in the middle of, and that of course is uh, not the late 80s movie version, but the original version, particularly with the, the young William Shatner being a, uh, a, you know, being a, a passenger on this airplane and looking out the window and seeing this monster out there ripping out the rivets holding the engine onto the wing or the wing onto the body of the plane. Uh, William Shatner could clearly see the, this, this monster uh, literally ripping apart the fabric of the, the airplane uh, holding this whole thing together. And, and of course, the shtick was that nobody else on the airplane could see the monster that William Shatner could see. Uh, and this was the whole point. So, of course, you know, it ends uh, with, with uh, Will getting dragged off uh, in a straitjacket to a lunatic asylum. So, you need to decide for yourself at the end of this, did he see the monster or did he not? And uh, if, you're, if you were this far down the, the Doomosphere rabbit hole to be listening to this whine, you, like me, clearly understand that the, 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 the very fabric uh, holding this thing together, the, the engine, uh, the wing on the airplane is being ripped asunder by the monster of global industrial civilization, by this ecocidal culture, uh, whatever term you want to use for it, we know what we're talking about. Uh, and, and this motherfucker is coming down, and it's coming down soon. There's not that many rivets left for the monster to rip. And uh, if you understand that, welcome to the rabbit hole of the depressed collapsitarian. Uh, you're one of the few. You're one of the few people who can handle the truth, while the vast majority, while 99% of the people on the airplane are, have no idea uh, of the monster taking this thing down. And uh, once, once you understand the monster, once you believe in the monster, uh, good luck to you. And, 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 and this shit, guys, has, has, has just completely driven it home to me. You know, this is obviously uh, the, the spot where Michael Rupert was when he finally ju just, uh, j just lost uh, the last shred of his, of his dark, twisted, sick, ironic sense of humor keeping him alive and just understood uh, what, what the new normal was on this planet that we are completely fucked, that there's not a goddamn thing any one of us, from, from an individual to a society-wide to a species-wide level at this point are going to do to turn this spiraling down airplane uh, getting ready to hit getting ready for the big splat. I mean, it's like, like, like what more do you need? 
The, the, the entire planet is burning today, guys. The planet is burning while we have uh, the single biggest uh, monster superstorm in the Atlantic Ocean in history heading towards Florida with, with the, the climate change denying governor of Florida imploring 20 million people to get the fuck out of the way. And people, what Twilight Zone episode, Hambone? We have 20 million climate refugees right here in the United States of America today as I am speaking while millions of people in the Pacific Northwest are gasping for breath. Uh, how many people down there in Texas and Louisiana, uh, they're beyond gasping for breath. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. Less than a week ago, and here we go again in Florida. What collapse, what chaos, what end times? Why are you depressed, Hambone? Jesus, we're so fucked. So let me inventory, let me inventory my summer. Okay, what do we have? We've got two weeks left in summer. So let me go back to about two weeks before summer 2017 again. I think, I think my plan was to spend like five or six weeks in uh, Brother Mark's uh, beautiful little cabin on 12 acres on the San Francisco River in West Bumblefuck, uh, New Mexico. I did not make it five weeks. I made it five days because it was 118 fucking degrees before the first day of summer ever arrived. My goddamn brain was melting, so I got my ass out to California, uh, where I thought maybe uh, after after a few days of playing the Big Lebowski uh, in, in the Hollywood Hills, I said, well, let me return to the hot spring up in the Sierras uh, for a little bit of escape from the madness of LA, only to find that the hot springs was buried uh, in four feet uh, under the floodwaters of, of, Buckhorn, of Buckeye or Buckhorn Creek. Uh, so I spent 12 days there, and then it was time to head to my Bigfoot hunt up there in Northern California, in Happy Camp, California. But when I got to fucking Happy Camp, it looked like this. So I fled from uh, from Happy Camp uh, to get my to get to get the fuck out of the the, the hellfire and brimstone, and uh, it, it took me about five or six hundred miles to arrive here, where where maybe I thought that I could you know take the advice uh, of all of these goddamn people. It's almost become a cliche at this point. It's just become the latest trite cliche uh, here in the end times about reconnecting with nature. Reconnect with nature to, uh, to, to, to do what? Uh, you know, all of these people who have spent about, who spend about an average of three days a year out in, out in uh, the woods, uh, you know, sitting down at their at their little computers in their office uh, telling people how to fucking reconnect with mother nature to uh, survive the end times to get over your depression so I thought maybe maybe finally that, that, that I could go 30 fucking days out here reconnecting with nature in, in one of the most glorious landscapes certainly in the United States, if not on the planet, 
but hell no, do you think I could make it 30 days? No, I did not quite make it halfway through 30 days before the collapse of the planet followed me here. Uh, this is reconnecting with nature. Take a long fucking look at reconnecting with nature. This is, is, is being wrapped in the bosom of mother fucking nature. We're fucked. You know, uh, what was I saying uh, just about a week ago that the, the real reason for this joke fucking Bigfoot hunt that I've been on uh, for the past 16 days would occur to me. Well, well it obviously it's occurred to me. It, it's just th th this Bigfoot hunt ha has just become th this metaphor for the absolute hopeless pointlessness of, of, of life from here on out. I was just reading, I have in a separate rant, uh, talking about uh, Chris Hedges' rant this week, Diseases of Desperation or something like that, where he was quoting uh, the sociologist Emile Durkheim uh, from his book On Suicide. Just, why the fuck do people kill themselves? Why did Michael Rupert put a bullet through his head? He figured it out. It's pointless. There is no point. There is nothing you can do. You're fucked in every direction. 360 degrees. It makes no fucking difference which direction we head in anymore. You know, you might as well go on a fucking Bigfoot hunt. It doesn't make any difference. And so here I am, once again, what a fucking surprise. And so I'm packing up that gas sucking truck one more time, heading to some other fucking volcano to look for Bigfoot in the end times. I have no direction in my life. I, I, I am absolutely rudderless. It's just it's floundering around in a typhoon, as uh, Joseph Conrad would, would call my life, or anybody's life, from this point forward. This little dog right here it is the it is the single most important thing in my life on this planet. This little dog means more to me than, than every fucking human being on this planet combined right now. Probably the one thing left on this fucking planet keeping me from uh, going the Michael Rupert route.
two weeks from, what is it, two weeks from today or tomorrow, yes, my birthday, 58 years. on this planet and here this is how I'm closing out year 57 <sighs> I know a little dog just aimlessly fucking wandering around through this pointless fucking existence wanting nothing more for my 58th birthday than I wanted for my 57th and that's simply to lie down go to sleep and never wake the fuck up to become the ultimate a sleep clueless fucking moron Speaking of being asleep, I had this, I had this dream last night. Uh, I guess I was back in Austin, Texas, lying on a couch, and all of my it was it was it was both my clueless, lovable friends, who I love dearly and who love me, and all the the people I absolutely despise. It was like everybody in my life in Austin, Texas. From my, from my worst enemy to my best friend were all just, just, just gathered around and, and milling about in, in, this, in this big room. I was, li I was just lying on the couch, kind of curling up in a fetal position, and they just sounded like this, this, this voice, all of their voices just talking shit. It was just this unintelligible babble going on, and, and apparently they were getting together in their little herd, heading off somewhere, and, uh, and somewhere that they were all excited about, that I had no clue what the fuck it was, because I couldn't hear through all of this, all of this whirring, jangly noise that they were making, uh, and, and, I, and, and two or three of them saw me there lying on the couch and uh, stopped by to say, well, Hambone, we're, we're heading off. Aren't you coming? And I said, no, I'm just going to lie here on the couch. As all of my clueless, lovable friends just disappeared to where all of my clueless, lovable, moron friends disappear to every day. Just going right on about their business. So I guess I'm going to wrap up this whatever this is because I understand I am talking to myself once again. Uh, I'm going to wrap up this week's collapsed depressitarian quine of the week. Now even my little dog is bailing on me. So I can get back to believing, believing in Bigfoot, believing in the monster, and working up the energy to pack up the world's former most beautiful campsite and head off to surely my last adventure of the s summer of 2017 on the flanks of the Mount 
Olympia or Mount Olympus, whatever it's called, volcano. Smoke them if you got them, guys. We are so fucked. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. There you go. Take a look at Mother Nature at her finest. Can you see that little blurry, little dim, blurry smudge in the sky? That would be the sun. The new normal. Get out there in Mother Nature. Bye, guys.